Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome to the conversation. Hi, how are y'all doing? I so miss the conversation community. What have y'all been up to? You know, what's been going on? Um, please, as you are checking in, tell me where are you from? Where are you tuning in from? You know, and hey, just give me a little bit of about, you know, how did you hear about the conversation? But of course, you know, without um, any further ado, you know, of course, if you um, are joining me for the first time on the conversation, you can be a part of the conversation community by three ways. And yes, I do mean by three ways. You can like it, share it, or make a comment to be a part of the conversation community. Here in this conversation community, we like to be real with one another. We like to share um, how we can be relatable and also how we can be relevant with one another. You know, uh, this is a space. This is a place where we share things with each other. This is a space is where we are real with one another. This is a space where we like to just let our hair down and just be who we are. And so that is what we do here on the conversation as a part of the conversation community. So again, hello everyone, how are you doing? Please let me know where you're tuning in from, where you're listening from. And again, you know, if you would like to be a part of the conversation community, you can be a part of the community by three ways to join, you know, like it, share it, or make a comment to be a part of the conversation community. Um, Today on the conversation community. Hello, hello, hello. I see we have someone from Buffalo, New York. Hello. Hello, everyone. How are y'all doing? How are you doing? I'm so happy to have y'all here with me this evening. Oh, we have someone listening in from Louisiana. Hello, Monroe. That is my hometown. So yes, I am so excited. So tonight on the conversation, we have... Um, an awesome guest. I'm so excited because today she is telling us, teaching us how, how important, how important it is for us to take action, how important it is for us to take action. And we're going to find out, you know, how she got into wanting to take action. What was it? What is her story? What was her journey? Um, to make her want to start taking action. And we also know that we should take action within our life, you know, moving the needle point, moving forward, you know, how do we take action? What does us taking action look like? And what it did look like for her when she took her action steps. So I invite you all, come on with us as we speak with Miss Perlette and she tells us about the importance of taking action. So Miss Perlette, if you don't mind, would you please tell the conversation community um, a little bit about yourself? Like, you know, where are you from? You know, maybe uh, some fun facts about you. So give us a little bit about you. All right. Thank you so much for inviting me, Andre. I'm so happy to be here. Um, thank you so much. Listen, I am always watching and listening to the conversation. So it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And hello, everyone. I'm so happy that you're part of the audience. And um, so my name is Perla Castells, and I live in Canada. I live in the province of Ontario, Canada. Uh, but I'm Jamaican born, so yes. <laughs> you know, the Olympics time, I am not even quiet. You know yes, what I mean? That is right. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so I know. right. Yes. Yes, exactly. So um, I moved to Canada several years ago, and so I've been living here. It was a huge adjustment getting used to the winter because, you know, Jamaica is always warm and there's reggae music playing and everything, okay. you know. <laughs> I, exactly. <laughs> Happiness galore. Yes. Um, but yeah, so, you know, um, I wanted to share a little bit about my story living here. I enjoyed, I do a lot of volunteering here. Um, mm -hmm. I volunteer with the local hospital as a patient advisor. And I'll talk more about that in my story. 
Mm -hmm. um, because of my experience, I realized that, listen, I need to talk to you people about what went on. So if there are any changes that can be done, I made some recommendations at the hospital after my experience. Um, mm -hmm. I also volunteer with the Cross-Cultural Learner Center here and they help immigrants, sorry, they, yes, they help immigrants and they also help refugees who are coming from war-torn areas. So I volunteer with them as one of their community hosts and what that is, when they come new to this country, people who have been living here, the residents, they match them up with us and we become their friend and introduce them to the community and help them, you know, integrate and feel a part of the community. So I love doing that. I've been doing that for several years. Hmm. Um, I got an award for that for 15 years of volunteering. So yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I love giving back. That's awesome. That is, that is wonderful. And so now as you're talking about giving back, you know, um, I do agree it's very important um, to give back to the community, to give back in any aspect that you can, yeah. you know, to be a, a service and to That's be a right. servant in any um, capacity or any area. So yes. I totally agree. You know, it's um, I believe you 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 get what you put out. That's right. And so if you put out good energy, then that good energy would come back to you. And it does not um, mean that you're going to get it from whomever you gave it to. But just knowing that that good energy is going to come back to you, um, whatever you sown um, into whatever ground, you know, yes. you're going to reap some type of harvest from Absolutely. whatever you sown. Um, and it could be just sometimes you can sow a smile. Yes, exactly. And, mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. right. Uh-huh. Just sewing a smile because like we never know um uh, what someone else's day was like, you know, Correct. but because they came across our path and we just gave them a simple smile or yes. we just gave them a simple nod or a wave, you know, just to let them know that they matter. Exactly. You know? It makes a huge difference. And I mean, even as you were saying, a smile. So I have this thing where where I work nine to five as well. And so mm -hmm. whenever there's any news that come out saying someone's been promoted, they had a baby, some life change, instantly I send a message of congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just become a part of what I do because I think, you know, it's nice for, for us to just take a minute. It takes like seconds to just say congratulations, mm -hmm. you know. Andrea, this happened in your life. It's so exciting. So, you know, the little things they do add up and, and matter. Yes, and you are so absolutely right. It definitely the small things they do add up. Mm -hmm. And you don't, and sometimes you never really pay really realize how yeah. much they add up until you kind of just looking back, like in hindsight, and you go like, oh wow. Yes. Like you can see the process, you can see the movement you know, when you look back, but sometimes it's hard when you're going through the midst of it. You're like, oh my yeah. goodness. Like, I don't feel like nothing's happening. Nothing's moving. Like you feel stuck. Yes. But not realizing that even though you might be biting off a small piece, even those bite sizes equal up to a half and a half to a whole. And, you know, exactly. And it's becoming part of your legacy. Your legacy is everything you do every day. And I mean, mm -hmm. when I learned that, I'm like, I thought that was waiting till you're like 70, 80 or something. But no, it's what you get known for, right? You're the right. That are your habits, your values, all those things. Yes. And you are so right because I was the same way. I thought the same thing. Like, you know, when I would hear legacy, I thought legacy, you know, was more so like when I became older, you know, I'm leaving a legacy or just for some reason, like when I hear the word legacy, I just feel like I should be like so much older. Like, you know, yes. like you said, in my seventies, you know, someone but now leaving a legacy, yes. but not understanding that even at my age, I'm building a legacy. Yes. Um, even when you're like 18, 19, 25, 26, you're still building a legacy. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. have to change it for our generation and stop like 
putting things up because it's now, it's every day. I remember Oprah was saying, they were doing an interview with Oprah and she was talking about um, her relationship with Maya Angelou. Mm. And she was saying to Maya that, you know, the school that she opened in South Africa, that will be a part of her legacy. Mm. And Maya in her wise, in her wisdom, you know, she's always so wise said, no, my dear, I can't talk like her, but I just love how Oprah says it. No, my dear, your legacy is everything that you're doing right now, you know? Yes. And then I realized, yeah, it's so true. Because when people pass away, even when they're young, you're like, oh, that person used to do this and this. It becomes part of the memories and their legacy. You are so yeah. right. And you're definitely right. If someone says um, that your legacy is what you what you want to be known for. Exactly. Really. Yes. Yeah. And, and your legacy, it could be. I feel like your legacy is more so of how you impact people. True. What impact did yes. you um, leave with people? Right. That's your your legacy. That's part of your legacy. You know, let's say that that's part of your legacy is the impact that you've made upon people. And yes. like you said, how people will remember you and what you're known for. That's that, right. That's a legacy that, that yes. you, you will leave. You'll leave. But so let's get into, you know, uh, taking <laughs> action, the importance <laughs> of taking action. So give us a little bit about your story, your journey um, before you. Um, became such an advocate, a strong advocate of <laughs> taking action. Yes. Oh my goodness. And you know, taking action is now part of my legacy. Now that we mentioned the word, it's like in my brain. Yes. So what happened was a few years ago, um, mm -hmm. I had surgery. And so I went to the I I was in a hospital. The surgery went well. And you know what? Debt did not even cross my mind, believe me, because mm. um, here in Canada, when you have surgery, you get a, an opportunity to meet the surgeon like a few days before you can talk to them. So when you are there on the gurney looking up, you've already met them, right? So it's not that intimidating, right? So yeah. I met the surgeon the Monday and talk, and she's like, yeah, I do this kind of surgery all the time. So nothing to worry about. You're in good health. You're young kind of thing. So I went there like, yeah, you know, everything will be well. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I had the surgery, as I mentioned, everything went well. I went back. So they, you know, I was out of recovery and they brought me back to the room. Mm -hmm. And my cousin was there visiting. My cousin is my power of attorney. It's so important, everyone, you have a power of attorney, someone to make decisions for you when you're not able to, someone That's responsible. Um, so, you know, she's kind of joking, like, girl, I didn't have to use it, you know. I'm like, I want you there just in case, you know, you know what I want. Anyway, um, in a moment, in a second, I feel a sensation in my throat and I'm like, what is this? This feels weird. By the time I'm there thinking what it is, I'm already gasping. I, and I inhaled and there was no oxygen. And I am here trying to find the, you know, emergency call button. And, you know, with the huge incision I had, I just couldn't reach it. So my cousin ran and got medical help for me. But what I realized was my oxygen level went too low. It just plummeted. Um, mm. And that plunged me into respiratory distress. And I could not breathe. And I'm telling you, they called cold blue. And before I knew it, my room was filled with medical personnel trying to save my life. And um, the blood pressure monitor, the numbers were just racing. And the last time I looked up, it was 175 over 100. And I remember gasping at that moment. And it wasn't until the moment when they start to fit the oxygen mask on my face now. Um, it occurred to me that, oh my goodness, I could die. Like this is for, I don't know, it must have been shock because it was like I was watching the room fill up with all these people. But nah. it didn't even occur to me that, oh, they're all here to save my life and I could die. But it was when she was putting the oxygen mask on. I'm like, oh, my goodness. 
um, I could, this, could, this is it. Cause I couldn't breathe, like nothing was going in. And it was there on a prayer and a promise. I said to God, if I ever make it, I promise you those dreams you place in my heart, I am going to make sure I get them done because mm -hmm. all this time I had the list. I had the list. Yeah. I did not schedule anything. I did not take action on it. No action. Mm -hmm. And they're living, cruising, thinking, oh, yes, I'm young. You know, whenever I'll get around to it someday. Yeah. And it was in that moment I realized, nope, time is the most limited resource and it is not guaranteed. So I am on a mission now to help others stop waiting to start because that's what I was doing. I had the list and you probably have the list too, mm -hmm. but you need to schedule things and take action on them. So that is where I am at today. You know, the, the life that you desire is on the other side of your action. Um, oh, and I can't I like, that. Mm -hmm. I like how you said that. Say that yes. again. The life that you desire mm -hmm. is on the other side of your action. Absolutely. Oh, somebody put that in the comments. She just <laughs> dropped a nugget. I like that. The life that you desire is on the other side of your action. Yes. Wow. That's wow. where it is. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And so I went on to write two books and this is one of my books here. Oh, let me see. I'm going to right. Oops. Oh yeah. Okay. What does it say? Come in right here. Come, come back okay. over a little bit. Other I think, way, other sorry. Way. Oh, there, there yes. it is. Uh, so, so what does what that, does mean, that doctor? mean, doctor? Mm. Right. Key questions to ask and how to prepare for your medical checkup. Um, wow. yeah. So this is one of the books that I wrote because it was helpful. You know, I was going through stuff and I, I didn't realize what questions I needed to ask, right? I was relying on the doctor to just tell me and not being proactive, right? So when I realized all these things. You know what? You are so right, um, Miss Perlet, because when we go to the doctor, we kind of just go with the idea of not... <laughs> It's our life and it's understandable that, you know, when we go in for surgery or any type of procedure, our life is pretty much in their hands. Yes. But we never take the initiative to have prepared questions for, okay, now what is this process again? So right. I know we're doing it for this, but what does that look like? Well, yes. okay, can you, can you break down these big medical terms? and put it in layman terms for me to be able to understand it. And, you know, sometimes like even when we're at the doctor's office and they'll give us a, a shot or they'll give us some type of medication and we're so scared to even ask the question of, well, wait, what are you giving me? Well, what's right. in that? Well, what is yes. that supposed to do? Well, I'm already taking five other medications. What is this supposed to do with that? Medic you know, and I wonder like, why is it that we don't advocate? Thank you, Sharon. You're right why we don't advocate for ourselves and speak up. Right. And you know what? We, it's our life and um, it's our bodies. So yeah, mm -hmm. so I got brave and I started asking, I bring my notepad and my pen and ask, you know, the questions. So another thing I learned is that, you know, at any age, you need to know, you know, what your blood pressure, your blood sugar, all those things, what your level should be. Girl, I had no idea. Oh my god, okay, okay, Miss Perlet. Now you have just said a mouthful. So I'm gonna give you just I'm gonna give okay, okay, community. I'm gonna give y'all just a little bit about my experience. And it's so funny that you're saying this, Miss Perlet. So my blood pressure is like textbook perfect. Like I'm like legitly textbook perfect blood pressure. Like when I learned what the numbers were. And mm -hmm. so we used to always have to take our blood pressures, you know, in class and everything. And so mine was always textbook perfect. And so one day um, I found myself just feeling real low. I didn't know what, what, what it was, but I was feeling real low, feeling tired. And I was like, what is this? 
And so we took my blood pressure at home and it was real low, wow. like real low. Goodness. And so at this point, I'm like, I'm passing in and out on the couch. Wow. Jeez. Yes. Like I am passing in and out and still not even understanding what's going on. I'm thinking I'm just, I'm thinking just fatigue. Mm. You know, because you know you, we can't be tired. So I'm thinking I'm just right. crashing, you know, coming to and crashing, because that's what it felt like. I was just really right. just crashing out and coming back or whatever. So yeah. I get to the the emergency room. Okay. And the triage nurse, you know, she does everything she has to do for triage, you know, to check right. me in. And she takes my blood pressure and she says, "Oh, it's a little low, but you're okay. You're okay because you're petite." Hmm. What? And I. Say no, ma'am. I say my blood pressure is textbook perfect. I say that's low, that's low for me. Now mm -hmm. I don't know what how y'all look at it as far as you know me being a petite person, but no, ma'am, that's something's wrong. Right. And so then I go and tell her some other things that I've noticed. Next thing I know, Miss Perlet, everybody is swarming around me like a like a hive of honeybees. Wow. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. My blood pressure is just low. What are we doing? Yeah. We only find out I had internal bleeding. No way. Yes. Jeez. And what if you weren't persistent and said, no, ma'am, because you know you knew your number. What if you didn't know your number? And that's the thing. Wow. Exactly. And you are absolutely right. What if I'd have never known my number? I'd have went home and just. Yeah, you have just taken what she said because you're like, they're the medical staff. They know their stuff. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look mm -hmm. at that. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and when I good tell things you, you are persistent. Yes. And when I tell you, they started running around me. I mean, next thing I know, everybody just running and they're coming with different machines and different <laughs> tests. And I was wow. like, oh, uh, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like oh uh, what's going on and she was like you're bleeding on the oh, inside my. and we gotta find it and i'm like wow ma'am i just came in here because my blood pressure was low <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yes yes and that and i and i think about that all the time when i go into a medical office or anything like i'm like no i i know my body because this is my body exactly I'm, I'm in my body and like you know mm -hmm. Yes. And it's all about taking action because you could have just said, okay, ma'am, thank you and leave. Like, no, that is why you need to know your numbers for your blood pressure, your blood sugar and your cholesterol. Those three mm -hmm. key ones, you must know them because mm -hmm. when they're out of work, you can call up people and say, no, ma'am. Mm -mm. Last time when I was here, it was not that. So explain to me what is the impact Mm -hmm. on my life with that because look mm -hmm. at that suppose you had gone home wow and you're right you're right you're absolutely right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so tell us more about your book so you know you wrote you wrote the book you know so doctor tell me what does that mean so tell us more about your book right so i wrote the book because i wanted to inform others you know um about the critical questions they need to ask and to prepare for their medical checkup don't just go to the doctor thinking yes it's my medical checkup and i'll just sit there and let them tell me everything and i just leave mm -hmm. so what i recommend is whenever they send you for the blood work mm -hmm. you don't even wait i know my doctor says this too oh if there's anything off we'll give you a call no not anymore I book my appointment and I go in there and with, well, nowadays you can print off your report. Like within three days, that report is ready online. So you go online and I print it off and I, I set up my appointment and I do my follow-up and I go line by line. So what does that mean, doctor? And that's how come I got the title of the book, right? Because I took my lab work and I went and some of it, you know, might say, give you an indication. So I said, what is a normal level? What does that mean, doctor? And what is the impact of this number? What is 
normal for me based on my age, my weight, my medical history, my family history, all that, what's the impact it will have on my life, right? Because I want to know if there are any signs I need to be looking out for. So you have to go in there prepared. So that's the reason for the book. Um, my dad died of a stroke. So I know that high blood pressure is in my family history. And so um, that is something I always have to be mindful of. So part proceeds of the book goes to the Heart and Stroke Foundation as well. Oh, and I help them to raise yeah. funds. Yeah, in memory of my, my dad, yeah. Mm -hmm. So awesome. yeah, the book is a tool to help people when they go for their medical checkup. You know, don't just go in there and listen and not take time you were there. If your numbers were this, mm -hmm. and then when you, um, your, your current visit, you notice that they're different, don't be afraid to ask questions about that. You have to take action on your own life. Mm -hmm. you're right you're right we have a question um how do we purchase the book oh it's available on amazon amazon.com yes okay so the Thank book you. is available um conversation community the book is available on amazon.com and the name of the book again is so what so does doctor. that mean doctor mm -hmm. right let me see can i hold it up i don't know it's <laughs> there you go right there Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So what does that mean, doctor? You know, um, and it kind of give, it gives you the tools to become an advocate for yourself, becoming an ad advocate for your body um, and giving right. you the necessary questions that you need to ask when you right. go to the doctor. Yeah. Oh, and then she has a blood pressure chart. So now you can start seeing your numbers. Without right. remember your numbers, you can actually see what the frequency, what the pattern is in your numbers, you know, what they should look like. And if they are high, low, you can see where yeah. um, it might be off at. So that they can track good. it for themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So you were telling us, so you had, so you said you was in the, um, at the hospital and they was putting the mask on you. So tell us more about the different thoughts that you had when they was putting the mask on. And like you say, you went from that to being an advocate of taking action. Yes. So I realized that, you know, we take it for granted that we have all this time, you know, we think, oh, I'm young. And listen, I did that too. <laughs> you think you're young and yeah, I'll do that next week. Next week becomes next month. Next month becomes, you know, next six months. Before you know it, it's a year and your life is passing by. And That's all true. these things you want to do, you keep delaying it. You keep delaying it. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes, unfortunately, some of us don't get a second chance. I got a second chance. And listen, I take that seriously. February 27, 2014. Is like a rebirth day for me because that was the day I got a second chance. Because when I asked about, and that's how I became a patient um, advisor and advocate with the hospital, I said, I need you to ask me every question there is. So if there's another patient who comes in here, they realize before it gets too late to get help because it went from normal to critical in like on a dime wow. and if my cousin wasn't there i didn't have the strength to call for help i couldn't find the button that they the panic button so i said to the hospital you know what you need to put that panic button right on people's gown it needs to be pinned on their gown or when you bring them into the room orient them where all these emergency buttons are so if something like that happens because you're not thinking clearly too many things are happening mm -hmm. at least you remember that oh they just told me that the button is right there or let me put that panic button right on their gown or something oh, wow. um, and there were other recommendations i had like you know when i woke up i was very hungry and the nurse in recovery gave me like a cookie. And I'm like, that is the worst thing you can give to a patient just waking up from surgery. Because I realized that when I was chewing it, 
if it got stuck in my throat, I couldn't cough because I had this huge incision in my chest. Mm. And I'm like, those are things you do not. Um, so there were some lessons I learned and I said I wanted to make sure I pass it on. So if someone else comes in, at least we warn them. Also, it doesn't matter what type of surgery you're going for. Make sure you have someone in the room with you. Because mm -hmm. my cousin lives far away. And I was saying to her, girl, it's getting dark. It's getting late. I'm okay. Don't worry. You can leave. And she's like, no, let me just stay a little longer. And thank God she did. Because it just happened like that. There was no indication. I was talking. Everything was fine when the oxygen level just drop yeah instantly so uh, always have someone with you yeah and about taking action I encourage others what I realized was I needed to change my habits so I habits are the vehicle that will help you to take consistent action mm. motivation will get you started and it builds momentum but habits will take you to the finish line. I like that. And you got to say it again, Miss Perlet. You got to say it again. You know, you, you, you dropping them. You got to say it again for the community. <laughs> Listen, motivation will get you started and it builds momentum. Mm. But habits will take you to the finish line. That will keep you consistent. And consistency is what you need. Because you will not wake up every day motivated. You will not. You cannot sustain it. You have motivation in spurts. That's but true. when you develop a lifestyle of good habits, that discipline is what will help you to keep moving forward. And mm -hmm. that is what's going to help you to get those results and bring the transformation. And that's how I was able to transform my plus faith, which is the number one right that is the key but that was the thing little by little and i encourage people small action steps small start small so what i did week ahead planning is something that wow if i can preach anything it's going to be about week ahead planning mm -hmm. to make your days more productive mm. so when you say week ahead planning can you describe more for that for us, like just breaking it down more about the planning and how to put it into how, how can we get organized with that? Sure. Happy to. <laughs> so every Sunday at 7 p.m., I sit with my journal, my planner, and I map out my week. Right. Mm -hmm. So, OK. So what I do, first of all, I also have. Um, a workbook and it's a goal setting strategic planning workbook and it talks about your why always start with your why because mm -hmm. when you start with your why when the going gets tough when the, the why will be compelling enough to fuel you mm -hmm. that is what's gonna fuel you you know, yes. so start with your why and what I do and I encourage my clients and others make sure and i do mine per quarter so i have the quarter and i decide on three goals one goal per per month mm -hmm. i break down that one goal into four micro goals one micro goal per week so it's not overwhelming and from that one micro goal, I divide that one micro goal into five daily tasks. So one task per day, Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. So when Friday comes, I am going to say, yeah, I did it. So I work on that micro goal for that week. Yes. And it's all attached to your goal. So your one goal for the month, you break it down into four micro goals, one micro goal per week. And each week, one task per day because we have many other things that we're doing with our life right i can't tell you to go do 10 things that's not realistic and also when you break down your micro goals into tasks make sure the task is actionable it's measurable and it's manageable because if it's not 
Say that again, Miss Perlet. Say that again, Perlet. Say it again. <laughs> it has to be actionable, mm -hmm. measurable, and manageable. Mm -hmm. For example, I am bad at drinking water and staying hydrated. Girl, I'm telling you, for years, I will have the water and the day, oops, I'm always holding it the wrong way. And the day goes by and like half of it is still sitting at the end of the day. So I'm like, okay, I only tell myself that, oh, I'm going to drink some water. That's not measurable. Some is not measurable. What I had to do was to break that one habit down into three small action steps, like what I'm, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. So every morning after I have my breakfast, I fill my water bottle, right? That's actionable. Mm -hmm. I tell myself that I'm going to drink two liters per day, right? That's measurable. So at the end of the day, I can measure to see. Mm -hmm. At noon, I check to make sure I drank my first liter. Mm -hmm. And then at five, I continue drinking throughout the day. And at 5 p.m., I do my other check to make sure I drank the other liter. So in that case, I have my two liters. And then you can set whatever goal it is. So um, that's how I get to do it. So I just break down whatever goal I have into micro goals and then into actionable, measurable, and manageable daily tasks. Oh, right. I like that. Okay. And I have a free gift for anyone who would like it, the Get It Done Worksheet there. See. Oh, so, right. Yes. So that spells it out like each. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Right. So to the left-hand side, it has the days of the week and mm -hmm. then the goal category, the action that you will be taking, and the last column. See if I bring it up closer. And the last column there is your progress check. So at the mm. end of the day, you check to see whether you got it done to make it measurable. So in that case, you know you will be achieving your goals because it's yes. consistent. And this is it, to build that lifestyle of good habits to be more consistent. Mm. I like that. I like that. So Miss Perlette has a free worksheet for everyone and anyone who wants it if you want the worksheet let me um see you in the comment makes a comment that say you know i want it i want it i want it i'm interested <laughs> you know let me see because the worksheet is definitely a great tool it's a great asset to have so not only because sometimes it's confusing it can be um mind-boggling when we keep our goals and our things in our mind but yes. once we write it out, okay, Miss Perley, I'm gonna use your word. Once we write it out, then we can actually become more um action oriented. We can measure the goal and right. then we can make the goal more manageable for exactly. us to achieve the goal. So yes. we have to get it out of our mind and put it on paper so we can visualize it so you can see it and see exactly. what it is because sometimes when we're just thinking of the goal and miss Perlet, you know let me know if i'm wrong but sometimes when we can when we're just thinking of the goal we feel overwhelmed oh totally yes because you have so many different parts of your life you're thinking about business the side hustle the job mm -hmm. and for those who have kids and the family everything and that's when the goal, your dreams get pushed aside. So this way you're at least doing one thing every day towards your dream. Because what I realized too that day in the hospital is it doesn't matter who advised me, who said, Perlet, you need to do this or that. When I came to that moment, it was just me. It was just me. And you have to think, at the end of the day, will I be satisfied with the choices that I made, right? Mm -hmm. Those decisions that I'm every day, you get an opportunity to make decisions, right? Mm -hmm. So always check in with yourself, reconnect with your why. Will this be something I'm proud of, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if That's you start. Good. That's really good. 
So you have to ask yourself at the end of the day, is this something that I'm proud of? Right. Is this action going to move me closer towards my goal? Right. Mm -hmm. And in my workbook that I have, I have like a separate workbook that is for the quarter. If you want to set goals, that kind of thing. Um, it asks you about your why and like your values, like, you know, what does your dream life look like? I want you to think about it. I want you to feel it. Like, you know, whatever it is, just get yourself in that emotion. Yeah. And that will fuel you, you know, when you're like, no, I'm not going to wake up and do this. I remember I had to talk to a coach in South Africa and I had to wake up four o'clock, 4 a.m. because of the time difference because I need to do it before I start my regular job. Uh -huh. And I was there trying to talk myself out of it. And I'm like, girl, you better get up. And, you know, I some days I talk to myself. I'm like, girl, get up and do it, you know. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, will you be proud of that decision? You did not do it. You had the opportunity, but did you take action? You had the opportunity. Did you take action on it? Mm. So that's good. That's good. Oh my goodness. I like that. That is really good. At the end of the day, are you going to be proud of the action that you took? Yes. Are exactly. you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And is it moving you closer to your goals? And that is why I always say in my Facebook lives and stuff, I don't just say, you know, take action. You need to take strategic, consistent action because mm -hmm. you can be taking action and it's not strategic and it doesn't help you, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure to, when you um, take action, it's good to plan, schedule, and do it. That's how you get results. Plan it, schedule it, and do it. Because many people jump from motivation right to action, right? How many mm. times we go to conferences and we get so fired up, right? And that is great. You need motivation. But guess what? Once you're there, you go home, you schedule it and make a plan. Because when that motivation wears off, if you don't have a plan, you're going to procrastinate. You're so right. You're definitely right. If you do not have a plan, you will procrastinate. And that's because it's up here. Yes. Not overwhelmed. And then procrastination is nothing more than, and I heard this today and it was just mind blowing to me that procrastination is a symptom of fear. Yeah. Because you do everything else. You just don't mm -hmm. want, it's, right? That's why I say stop waiting to start. Just start. Stop waiting. <laughs> yes. And you're so right. You know what, Miss um, Perla? I heard, because um, like, okay, I'm always listening to things. And yeah. so I heard um, Patrice Washington. This is what I heard it from. And she yes. talks about sloppy progress. And really, she tells us about just moving. Just yes. getting into action, just taking those steps and start moving. Because once you start moving, then you will gain um, clarification. Exactly. You will, um, you will start seeing results, movement, yes. like action. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because clarity comes with action. It's when you're unclear, but by taking action, you're like, oh, that didn't work. Let me tweak this, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I have like a four-step implementation system and it's called PrEP. So P is to pause. So every Sunday I'm dedicated, I'm committed. And listen, I'm going to drop this now and say this. There's a difference between being interested and being committed. Mm. When you're interested, you can make all the excuses. Oh, you know, I was going to do this. You know, Miss Andrea, I was going to do that, you know. And, but when you're committed, you're like, if it takes early morning before I go to work, I got to work on this dream. If this is 10 minutes I have, I am going to work on this dream. Hmm. And I heard this quote from Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. He was being interviewed by Patrice Washington on her show, their podcast, Redefining Wealth. I love her show. <laughs> <laughs> 
people and Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, he, I love him. He said, the passionate, committed mind can never be defeated. Girl, mm. that is my word. Like with the passionate, committed mind, it can never be defeated. Because when you're committed, you will, listen, you will move every mountain to get that dream um, completed or achieved. So yes. Oh, so we have to tell ourselves, you know, all these things and make sure. And I was saying the four step system, you pause, make sure you take the time to do your week ahead planning. And what I mean is mapping out your week to make sure you have time to go after your dreams. Mm -hmm. The R is to reflect. And I always say reflect with gratitude, right? So I'll show you. Oops. Sorry, I didn't plan to do this, but I'll mention it. Fine. Go ahead. This is, oh, I should hold it this way. This is my gratitude jar. So every mm. Sunday on a post-it note, I write, oops, one thing that I'm grateful for. You see how big the jar is? Because now it's <laughs> August, eight months. I write one thing I'm grateful for. And come December 31st, New Year's Eve, I open the jar and read them. And listen, sometimes it shocked me, you know, on the things, the little things that happen that I'm so great. So I encourage my community to do that too. Oh, wow. Yes. That is awesome. So when you get discouraged too, you know, you open your jar and you read it. You're like, man, I've come this far. God is going to carry me, you know, and mm -hmm. Psalm 32 verse eight is one of my favorites. And it says, I will choose the best pathway for your life. I will mm -hmm. guide you and watch over you. I'm like, that's all I need to hear. Whatever it is, I'm going to make it. <laughs> yes. Indeed. yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. So the R is to reflect. The E is to evaluate. So when you evaluate, you say, what was a win for me? Mm -hmm. Right? You celebrate your wins. You don't wait till the journey is done or when you achieve everything. You cele celebrate every little step. Every little progress you make is still progress. Yes. And yeah. then um, what was a challenge for you? Don't you push away those challenges. You look at them and see what was the lesson? What was one lesson in that challenge? And from that lesson, what is one thing that I can use out of that to improve my life? Thank you yeah. for that comment, Wendy. I see she loves my energy. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for being here. All, I can't see all the comments. I'm so sorry, but thank you all for being here. And you know, you're just energizing me. And Miss Andrea, <laughs> you're just amazing. <laughs> I thank you. Thank you for being here. Yes. So you evaluate it and then you look to see what was the lesson. And from mm -hmm. the lesson, what was one thing you can take from that and use to improve your life to course correct? Mm -hmm. You always want to make sure you're examining what you're doing, evaluating it. And then the last P in the prep is to plan ahead. And that's where the week ahead planning comes in because you reconnect with your why and i say always reconnect with your why because you know what i'm gonna say about motivation it gets you started but habits is gonna take you to the finish line right so by you doing that every week before long you so you'll be surprised at the progress you're making and then it's a community surround yourself with like-minded and yes. heart-centered people not just like-minded heart-centered because you want to be you know around the right people who your values are aligned so those are the things that energize me and i'm like yes you know yes exactly oh my goodness i love it i love it i love it i love it for anyone who is just now joining on uh miss perlet is teaching us about the importance of taking action. She's told us about her journey, uh, about her, her, her moment, her experience that she had that propelled her to start taking action and to become an advocate about taking action. And it's important for us to take action, especially if we want to leave some type of legacy. 
If right. we want to leave a legacy, if we want to have a legacy, what will we be known for? Who will we have impacted? For the most part, who will we have been impacted? And so she's telling us, teaching us how to take action. And so she was just telling us about her gratitude jar. You know, some days when we have been working so hard, so consistent, so consistently, we really forget our accomplishments. We forget the many things that we've been grateful for. Because sometimes we just get so, like I say, boggled down, overwhelmed. And when we get so cloudy, it's good to just go back to our jar. See the many things that we are grateful for. See our accomplishments. And also to celebrate ourselves. Yes. Because a lot of times we would not, we look for other people to celebrate us. We have that people need where we need people to please us, but then we don't have that need to self-please. And we never self-please ourselves or we never self-celebrate ourselves, but we want other people to celebrate us. I believe the biggest celebration, the most impact that you can make is when you celebrate you. Exactly. You have to clap for yourself. Be your biggest cheerleader. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you're absolutely right. We have to be our biggest cheerleader because at the end of the day, who do we see when we're standing in the mirror? Uh-huh. Mm. Exactly. We see us. We see ourselves. You know, as my grandmother say, you know, even if you were a twin or a triplet, you came in this world by yourself. Come on now. Come on now. We, yep. we, we didn't get pulled out two by two, three by three. No, nope. we got pulled out one by one. That's so right. You came in this world by yourself and you will leave by yourself. So yeah. what impact do you want to make? So you have to be able to celebrate self. You have to be happy with yourself. And like you said, at the end of the day, what are you proud of? Yes, Exactly. What can you say? Every Friday, I look forward to have my hands in the air and say, yeah, you did it, girl. You did it. You set those daily tasks and you did it. Listen, Mm -hmm. and even when I celebrate, I just celebrate. I'm not going to wait for any permission from anyone. (laughs) Yes, yes. And you're absolutely right. Again, Miss Perlette has a free worksheet for you guys. for the done worksheet. Um, If you would like to have the worksheet, please make a comment saying that you would like the worksheet um, and we will give you, uh, Ms. Perlette will give you that information. She's definitely been tagged into this link so that she can send you that worksheet so she may be able to DM you, get your email address, uh, however Ms. Perlette would like to do it to get you that worksheet. But I highly encourage you to get that worksheet. Ms. Perlette has broken down that worksheet. And Ms. Perlette, if you don't mind, um, for anyone that's new who has just joined us, can you break down their worksheet again oh, so absolutely. they can understand what it is and the impact of yes. it? Yes. So it is called the Get It Done Worksheet. Mm. And I'm going to... There. Uh, okay. Yes. Get right. It Done Worksheet. Yes. Right. So um, what it is, and for those who are just joining, when you have your goals, make sure you have one goal per month. You break that one goal down into four micro goals. Why four? Because we have four weeks in the month, right? And from that four goals, you select one per week, then you break it down into five tasks, right? So you have one task per day. <clears throat> Sorry. So it's not overwhelming. Let me grab some water. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Oh, no. Yes. No so one task per day. So you have five tasks, right? And so on each and in the week, the Get It Done worksheet will help you. Whatever your task is, you write it one day. And this is for the day for one week. You write what your task is. And then at the end of the day, you can check it off to make sure you've done it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's how you get your goals done. Make sure your tasks, they're actionable, right? You put them where you can say, 
you don't just say i will drink water you say i will drink how many liters you make sure it's measurable so at the end of the day you can look and say okay i drank a liter i drank two liters what or whatever task you're doing if you want to make more money in your business instead of saying i'm going to make more money in my business put a specific amount and by when and you break it down look at that diva cole is in my community thank you <laughs> diva cole happy to see you here yes thank you break it down into actionable major brand manage every task awesome yeah. thank you so much for writing that diva cole yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And any so, questions they have, you know, feel free. I'm, you know, just send me a DM. And guess what? We didn't discuss this, but this is what I would love to do for your community. Oh, <laughs> listen up, community. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I would love to offer two people a complimentary 60 minute productivity quick start session, one on one with me. So I can see where you're at and help you move forward. Yes. <laughs> so guess what, Miss Andrea, it's up to you to choose who you would like, yourself and one other, yourself and two other members. Oh my yes. goodness. Okay. So I said, yes. <laughs> like, pick me, pick me. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, and you can do it tonight or you can decide whenever you want to do it. But I'll be more than happy to meet with you and help you. And it's called a productivity quick start session. And it just helps you to see where you're at and some direction of where you can go to start moving towards those dreams. Because I want you to stop waiting to start. I want to help you. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick the two people tonight. Okay, up to you. This is how we're going to pick the two people because I know one of them is already in your community. Okay. So we can't pick Nicole because she's no. already in your community. Right. But there are two people. And so I'm going to go down the comments and see who asked for the worksheet. Okay. Um, Sharon McCoy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You have just won, what did you say, a 60 minute? Yes, productivity quick start session with me. Yes, yeah, so you have just won a quick start session with Miss Perlet. Congratulations, Sharon. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Go ahead, community. All yes. right. And our awesome. next. Congratulations, person. Sharon. Yes, and our next person is oh wendy clark wendy congratulations congratulations wendy <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes 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 so congratulations 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 she said i won i won <laughs> Awesome. Yes, Congratulations. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We are going to get started. Do the productivity quick start. Yes. And yes. Yes. and this is, you know, of course, again, as Ms. Perlet has been talking about this evening is the importance of taking action. So moving forward, taking no action, whatever area it is in your life, we all need to take action steps. Right. Action steps are very important. And it's not even in one area. It could be, and like Ms. Perlet said, motivation is the momentum to motivate us, but the habit in the habit is where the transformation takes place. That's right. And so that is what we what's what you want. That's what we want is for that transformation to happen, you know. So we yes. gotta take action. We, I'm ready. I don't know about you, ladies, but I'm definitely ready for my session. I'm ready for my get it done worksheet so I can yeah. start um, moving forward, taking action. Um, because that's for me, I know there's a lot that I want to accomplish, but sometimes I get overwhelmed because it's up here. And, you know, we need to write it down. We need to visualize it so that we can actually make our goals more actionable manageable and measurable yes 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 so again um uh, miss perlette 
I just want to say thank you so much for educating uh, the conversation communities for coming on to speak with us, giving us so much knowledge um, and your 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 wisdom and your information that you have about the importance of taking action. Um, you know, I, sometimes we learn or we under we we gain more understanding for our purpose when we go through things. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize the importance of scheduling. You have to schedule things because what gets scheduled gets done. What Ooh, gets scheduled gets done. That's good. What gets scheduled gets done. And you are so right. It is, it's, it's very important to schedule things. And you know what it is? It also helps us with time management. Right. It helps us with time management and also it helps us with our um, anxiety. Mm -hmm. It helps us with our mental health when we're able to schedule things and make it manageable and and visualize it to get it done. So you're absolutely right. It helps in so many areas. I believe a lot of people don't even understand the importance of time management. They think it's just something that, oh, that you do when you're in school or that you do when you're a, a business leader or something like this. But no, every one of us should take some part in time management. I mean, because. Absolutely. Yes. So we can definitely be able to accomplish our goals or accomplish whatever it is that we want to achieve. Yes. And, you know, I never want to leave you without gi- giving you an assignment. I call it growth work. I, it's like homework, but homework is for our kids. But growth work is for us to grow, learn, and evolve. So the growth work, I need you to take action t- um, starting tonight. 10 minutes. If you take 10 minutes every evening in your evening routine for six days a week, would you believe that is one hour per week that you mm-hmm. are getting to do something? So I know it's what late now. So tomorrow I will let you off the hook for tonight. But tomorrow I want you to start blocking out 10 minutes every evening, right? To do a quick 10 minute task that you would procrastinate on. Something mm-hmm. that you can do, it takes you 10 minutes. I know one of my clients said she started to clean out her cupboards and she didn't even realize that it was so easy because it had seemed like such a huge task. But every evening, that 10 minutes, set your timer, right? And make sure that you take 10 minutes to do something that you would procrastinate on. Maybe sort the mail, maybe pick up, you know, some things. I use mine to like chop my vegetables. So like when I'm cooking later in the week, that saves me time. I can just grab a Ziploc bag and it's there. So yes, I see Sheila says, yes, Sheila, grow to work. Because <laughs> it's going to help us to grow and evolve and transform. And it's mm-hmm. all about creating a lifestyle of good habits, right? Because mm-hmm. that is what's going to help us. So you decide what 10 minute task you will do every evening for six days out of the seven days. And that is one hour. Can you believe it? One hour. Wow. And the second and final task, I won't give you too many um, growth work assignments. The other <laughs> one is always check your calendar the night before so you can see what is coming up the next day. That will help you to feel more prepared and ready, right? Mm. That will save you time from being late to things, right? How many times you wake up and like, oh my goodness, I didn't know this was today and I'm not prepared. That will help you. So always check your calendar the night before. I call it the calendar sneak peek. I look at my calendar to see what's coming up the next day, right? Um, So those are the two growth work actions that you need to take um, after listening to myself and Miss Andrea today, right? We are not going to talk to you about the importance of taking action and let you get off the hook. No. Yes. You are so right. You are so right. Yes. We will definitely be check. We're going to do some check-ins to see what type of progress 
that you have made. So we, we're we going to keep our eyes on you, community. All right, conversation community, we got our eyes on you. We want to know what is your progress and what have you done? So definitely. You know what? The more and more I'm thinking about, I, I think I said it before, but if if you agree with me, I feel like the conversation community, it is time for us to have us a Facebook group. I think it's time for us to have a Facebook group so we yes. can definitely be able to communicate with our community so yes. we can have um, these good things like, you know, have first looks in our community. So I think it's about time for us to have a Facebook community group for the conversation community. I mean, absolutely. Again, yes. And, you know, if you agree with me, let me see. Let me see your comments. Let me see what are your thoughts about us establishing and making our own personal Facebook group for the conversation community so we can um, come together so we can build a, a sisterhood, a community together, network together so we can just be together. You know, um, there are a lot of there are a lot of people that are in the community. There are a lot of um, networking opportunities in the community. There are uh, relationships that can be formed within this community, but we don't know because we're not always together. And I believe once we're always together and once we see, we can build such a strong community with one another. So yes. I think it's time for a group community. I think it's time for a group. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And like if anyone wants to join, I have a group called the Impact of Good Habits. So that's something and we do that um, uh, the week ahead planning on Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. Mm. Yeah, and what you call it again, the impact of of good habits, the impact of good habits. So Miss Perlet has a group also and she says that the impact of good, good habits it's yes. her group. So, you know, if you definitely You're want welcome. to continue to keep being action oriented, to keep taking those action steps, I would encourage you to join her group so you can be with like minded people in the community of taking action. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. I'm so yes. happy to be here. I just ah, feel like oh. I am so happy that you were here, Ms. Perlet. I believe that this was something this was necessary. It was awesome and definitely needed. I mean, I needed, I don't know about anyone else, but I definitely needed this on today. You know, I was kind of feeling a little down about my action steps, but now I feel like, you know what, what you have given me, you have given me the next momentum that I need to just keep moving, to keep pushing and keep propelling forward. So, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yes. And you yes. will do it and you will make it. Just plan it, schedule it, and do it. And you'll get your results. Yes. Thank you so much. And I I indeed I will. Again, um, conversation community, let's thank Miss Perlette for coming on, for being our guest on this evening. We thank her so much. And as you know, um, conversation community. We will be back again next Wednesday. I am here every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, 7.30 Central Standard Time. But every Wednesday, I will bring you a guest. And as I always tell you, I will bring you someone who's going to be real, who's going to be relatable, and who's definitely going to be relevant because we need someone. Um, we need these type of conversations. We need relevant conversations. We need real conversations. And we need someone who's just, who's who's relevant relevant with the times and with the things that are going on we know the pandemic happened and it has shifted a lot of things in our lives um even with the pandemic we found ourselves procrastinating we might have found ourselves you know being more um laxy daisy than mostly but you know what it's time to take some action steps it's time for us to get moving and keep um propelling forward and get some of our goals done some things that you've always wanted to achieve um, always desired to achieve. Now is the time for us to get those um, things done. So, but again, and again, before we go, congratulations, Wendy and Sharon. Congratulations on your winnings. Um, Miss Perlette would definitely reach out to you, um, ladies, yes. um, to get your email addresses, um, and so that you can uh, schedule your timing with Miss Perlette. Miss Perlette, you have my email address, so we're gonna. Yes, I'll be calling you. I'll be emailing you. 
<laughs> All right, ladies. All right, conversation community. Again, if you are joining um, us for this um, this live for this episode, and you are a, not a part of the conversation community, you are not a part of the community, but you see how much the community um, chats together, how we all bond together, how we band together. You too can be a part of the conversation community. Yes. There are three ways. Yes, there are three ways for you to join the conversation community. Like us, share it, and make a comment. So you can be a part of the conversation community because we are here um, as individuals. We are here so that we can um, better ourselves. So we can better ourselves and so that we can also remove some of the dead weight that we've been carrying. And so that we can expose who we really are. So we are exploring, we are exposing, and we are just excelling. So this is what we do here in the conversation um, community. We explore, we excel, and we expose. So, hey, be a part of the community. Again, I will see you next Wednesday. And remember to show the world who you are and don't allow the world to tell you who you are. You show up, you show the world who you want to be, who you are, because if you do not, the world will tell you who you are. So again, show the world who you are and don't allow the world to tell you who you are. See you next time. Have a good one. Thanks again. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.